Hey everyone, in the news this week, boat operator P&O has sacked 800 members of staff with immediate effect, which seems very unfair. Get it? Very. Emma Watson used her BAFTA appearance to attack J.K. Rowling. And if I were Rowling, I'd get straight to work, writing a new Harry Potter film in which Hermione puts on a ton of weight and maybe starts eating live snails. And fuel prices are still going up. I recently asked the wife if she wanted to go for a fancy dinner, you know, with champagne and caviar and Belgian chocolates and the like. And she said she'd happily just go for a romantic drive up into the mountains. And I pointed out that I don't have that kind of cash. Has, you know, have you seen the price of petrol? Anyway, this is week four of the Ukraine crisis. And to be honest, I'm running out of things to say about it. This week saw a strange turn of events. So as the traditionally left-wing press started celebrating a group of neo-Nazis who've been having success fighting the Russian troops. Clearly a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Here's a quick one for you. What do you call a fake enemy? Answer, a foe. F-A-U-X. Anyway, the Russian economy is in free fall and if the invasion is supposed to harken back to the days of the old USSR, then clearly that's reflected in the shops, with shortages and people queuing up to buy food. Despite this, Vladimir Putin recently showed up in a $13,000 jacket to give a rally to hundreds of thousands of troops in Moscow. I don't speak Russian, so I'm not entirely sure what he said, but clearly the cloud loved it, or at least we're being paid to love it. Maybe some classic old Soviet jokes like, knock knock, who's there? The KGB would come to arrest your husband. I don't know, maybe it's lost in translation. Anyway, there's also a cringeworthy video of Putin kicking about the internet, performing a version of 1950s hit Blueberry Hill. Anyway, if you do want to see him, then I guess he's banned from Ticketmaster, what with sanctions and all. But I hear he's planning a second gig in Ukraine, or at least I think that's what he meant when he said he was going to, quote, bring the house down. Contrastingly, this week saw the British Prime Minister fly to Saudi Arabia in order to cut a deal for cheap oil and gas. He got nothing out of it. In stark contrast to the public who had to stump up the money to pay for that flight at a time when fuel prices are at an all-time high. Although I guess there wasn't any wine this time, so maybe it all cancels out in the wash. Who knows? Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.